Got myself a special delivery here. There's actually uh, two packages in there. Just unloaded it with the skid loader. And one is for myself and one is for Adam over at Hometown Acres. So let's get this up the driveway and get it unpackaged and see what we got. I don't know if any of you guys want to try and take a guess in the comments. It's about uh, maybe six and a half, seven feet wide by about four feet wide. Say this package here is about 1,200 pounds for both of what's in there. So divide that up, roughly 600 pounds a piece. So if you want, put a guess in the comments prior to uh, unveiling and unboxing of these things to see if you have any idea what it could be. And I'll give you one quick little hint. start off by thanking Bob over at Metza Machine for sending me this Ultratech dump trailer and it is made in Finland. Adam over at Hometown Acres got something similar but it's not quite the same. After going through this uh, trailer, unpackaging it and uh, kind of looking through the, the box of it here and everything right now is still in the dump portion of the trailer. It's a very interesting setup, the way they've made these things universal, that they can change different things around to give somebody else a different style trailer. And uh, if you look in uh, the website on Metza Machines and you go to the Ultra Tech trailer portion of it, you can see all the different uh, trailers that they have to offer. And we'll go through and get this thing assembled here. I want to go through and do a, a kind of a step-by-step uh, step or the process of putting this together and it is all very very simple most of the stuff is is slid on to the main tongue of the trailer here and then just bolted down so the first thing that uh, we're going to do and if you haven't noticed adam's here he's he's cheating on seeing how this assembly goes so he's going to help me with this for a little bit but uh i was given some advice by bob that the easiest way to do this is to flip the bed of the trailer over work everything upside down. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this cardboard that came with the packaging on this to lay it on the ground just so it doesn't scratch up the top of this. So let's go ahead and slide this over Adam. And I did put this on a little four-wheel furniture dolly to make it a little easier to move around. So this will be the first thing I put on and it is the tooth bar it goes on the uh, the tongue side of the trailer and the uh, tube frame portion of that goes through there it sits down and you use these carriage bolts put them in there now one thing you want to make sure that you keep this round hole lined up as best as possible because that's your your pull out tube to give you a little extra leverage when you're lifting the dump portion of the trailer Everything lines up pretty easily here. And I wouldn't use an impact or anything fast on these uh, lock nuts or a nylon locking nut. Because when you run them on too fast, it actually will melt that plastic on there. So I want to give you guys a little bit of a tip for something like this. And we learned this years ago when we were kids. But this handle goes on the end of this shaft and it's a tight fit. You have to put this in the pull hole before you put the grip on. But if you take and drill yourself just a small little hole in the center. And all you're doing is looking to try to get some air out of that when you slide this on. And then my second tip is go get some hairspray. And I keep some out in the workshop for this specific purpose. But if you spray the inside of that grip, this hairspray acts as a lubricant. Then when it dries, it acts as an adhesive. So 
spray it inside the grip, put it on, and it uh, should be pretty simple. So let's go ahead and do this. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, shackles on that go around the frame, the axle frame, or the main frame. And this is where the dump trailer actually pivots for dumping. But what I want to make sure is that in the instructions, you could actually put these on upside down or backwards. These need to be facing this direction. And I'm going to assemble these two here on the bench. And what I mean by putting these on backwards is you've got to look at how this clamp nut on each side of this main frame line up. So when the unit is upside down, these are facing the left side of the unit looking back towards the rear end or the tailgate of the, the trailer. And it shows in the instructions pretty good which way those are supposed to go. So you need to look at that closely in, in these, these pieces here that we're putting on aim towards the back tailgate of the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and put these bolts in here on the bench. Then we'll set it over there on the trailer and get that together. And I'm putting the bolt down through first because I don't think it would be very easy to get the nut in there. And there's no washers with any of this stuff, which I don't think is a problem, but it is what it is. Because I want to make sure that there's some pressure on that bolt when I'm tightening it down. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down on that surface. So just the weight of this axle is pushing in the correct direction when I bolt this together. So there isn't play in there when it bangs or bounces around. These are the pivot bolts that go through for the frame for the dumping. Uh, I am going to go ahead and grease these up a little bit. I always like to, to do that just to, uh, I guess, keep it from squeaking or becoming uh, stuck. Then we're going to set this frame on here. Again, keep in mind, these tails are pointing towards the rear of the trailer and uh, the bolts are on this side of it. So you could put them on backwards, but just make sure the bolts are on the uh, the correct side or the correct orientation. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts in now on the pivoting portion. Now these particular bolts you don't want to tighten down until they pinched tight because what will happen is it won't allow it to pivot here easily. You want to get these pinched down just so they're snug to the outside steel, not collapse the inside portion of that to where it pinches it and then won't allow it to dump easily. What I'm looking for here is the gap. I just want to always make sure that there's a gap between this framework and the big bushing that's welded onto the bottom of the trailer. Right about there, it started bending that, but I don't want it to be pinched tight on that. And how I know it's not tight is I just wobble it back and forth a little bit and I can tell that there's a, a little bit of a gap in there. So we're ready for the axle portion of this and keep in mind that they both have caps in there, dust caps that go on. Make sure you remove them or you won't be able to get your uh, axle bushing in. Uh, again, these have the grease fittings on them, which is, is really, really nice. But we'll put the bushing in. We'll grease it later when it's all assembled. But one thing you got to make sure is, is that your, your grease fitting or your Zerk fitting is pointing up. And I say up because everything's upside down right now. When you put this on, you need to make sure these are pointing outside of the pocket they go in so you can access that for the grease fitting. We'll put this bushing in it. And I'm not worried about grease on that right now because I can do that when there's grease fittings in there. Put that in, put the bolt on. Then the nut goes on. And the instructions call out 100 to 200 Newton meters. 
of force to tighten this down. I've done a conversion on it and uh, I'm actually gonna cut that in half and say 150 Newton meters, which ends up being 110 foot pounds on a normal torque wrench. But uh, I would highly suggest that you do torque these down to what the specification calls for. There we go. That's all it takes. Now there's your uh, moving axle or walking axle or whatever you want to call it. And the nice thing about this is it's got built-in stops with the way they've machined this channel out. So when you do pivot over something, it will hit there and keep that axle from running down into the bed of your trailer. So let's go ahead and get all four tires on this. And one thing that I did is I put just a little bit of uh, anti-seize on each one of these stud bolts, just so that they never seize up or get locked into the, uh, the axle on this. And the other thing is they've got a, uh, a cone shaped on here, which helps locate them so they don't wobble. Never tighten the very first one down because that could force the rest of them to be out. So I'm just gonna finger snug all these in and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with the impact. There is no torque spec in the directions for what these should be tightened down to. So when I get it all done and flip it back over, I'll go ahead and put a torque wrench on it and just make sure all of them are the same. All right, and that's all you got. We'll go ahead and do the rest of them. Got all four wheels on. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the main uh, beam on here. Something you want to watch is it's got two holes in the end of it, just on one side. Those two holes need to line up with the two holes over here and here. And I've removed those bolts, so when I shove that beam in, I can see the location of where those bolts go in here to lock this down or to keep it from slipping back so it's it's a snug fit in there so once i get it so far i'm probably gonna have to pound it in the rest of the way all right so we've got the uh, trailer tongue in now and it's lined up so the back of this tongue sticks out just a little bit past the housing about half inch and you just want to make sure that the hole going through lines up with that. And I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on these bolts. Just because they're one of those things that you would hate to have the bolt back out and your whole tongue get pulled out. So I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on each one of them and snug them down in. And they'll actually go all the way through the tubing frame. And just tighten those down till the nut bottoms out onto the housing portion of it. All right, so when you put this thing on, these two tips that the struts mount to have to be up. Again, the trailer's upside down, so if you're looking at it the other way, these are down. So slide that on. It slides all the way back to the housing. It stops back there. And then I've already put Loctite on this one. You just put it on, center it up, and tighten it down. So next is the uh, trailer bed latch that we're gonna go ahead and put on. And again, you gotta make sure that the lever is pointing down because when the trailer is slipped over, you need it pointing up. And the mechanism, the way this thing works, is as you twist that, it spreads it and pulls the pin backwards and out. And there's something that I've noticed here when putting this together that you wanna keep in mind. And that is the proper gap between here and here. So you could put this thing on and theoretically push it all the way in, bolt it down. But when you go to push that release lever, it doesn't bring that pin far enough back. So you need to get a correct gap on there. And here's what I'm going to do to uh, get that gap. And it's pretty simple. I'm just going to take my 19 millimeter wrench that I was using, pick the tongue up, set it in there as a spacer. And now I'm gonna cantilever over the lever, push it all the way back until it hits that spot with it cantilevered over. So I know that right at that point, it'll clear. So I've got it pushed up tight and I'm gonna back it away just a fraction of an inch. And then I'm going to snug down or tighten down this bolt while I'm holding this lever over. 
that wrench space gave me the, the, the lift of the tongue that I needed to make the flat spot hit its stop point over under here. So now when I lift this up, the wrench will come out. Now my gap should be correct, so I want to go ahead and tighten that down. I'll do that real quick. Now when I push the latch all the way, or the tongue all the way down, that should cam over and latch in there properly. And now when I release it, it's at the right gap or the right distance that that doesn't get caught on there. So you can see I've got about a quarter of an inch of gap in there and it doesn't show what the gap distance should be in the instructions, but just common sense when I was putting this together said, that can't be tight up against there or your lever will not release that latch. So just a quick tip on putting that in. Something to keep in mind is you might need to make some minor adjustments on the, the, the gap or the distance that this sleeve for your latches on there to get that to function just the way it should be. Now, one of the other things is, is the stand. So when you unhook it from the whatever tow vehicle is, you can have this thing be held up. And you just slide that on there. And there's really no location that you put that at. But I'm going to bring it back to about this point. So when I release it with this lever here, it really doesn't get in the way. One thing you want to watch for, though, is when you flip this trailer unit over, that I wanted this to be on the driver's side when I'm unhooking it. So if you were to put it like that and flip it over, it's going to be on the opposite side of the bar when you get out of your, your tow vehicle. So I just wanted to make sure that I put that on the correct side. And again, I'll put some lactate on here and tighten that down and it's got a quick pin here and we'll go through all that one it's assembled for setting that up but one thing i wanted to point out that i got to looking at is the articulation on these these axles here and what they do and what i did was i just put a level across the top of the tires and checked the articulation of this way and also what the distance is between the high side and low side on these there is nine inches of articulation difference between this tire and that tire when they're pivoted low side high side and there's 12 inches of articulation between the front and the back tire when it pivots so this trailer should be able to run over just about anything relatively anything 12 inches or smaller if it's bigger than 12 inches then yeah you will have some wheels coming off the ground but I don't know anybody that's going to haul this through the woods and drive over something full that's bigger than 12 inches. So this has got a tremendous amount of articulation and ground clearance that it should be able to walk over just about anything. And in some future videos, we'll actually show how this thing crawls across the ground and goes over logs and things. So now we're moving on to one of the last pieces that we got. We've got the, the hitch and then we've got the struts to do. But... Uh, when you do this, again, you want to make sure that you're upside down with this portion of it. And also the grease fitting here fits into this notch on this side. So we'll slide that in. Stops just about the notch. Then I've got this long bolt that goes through this portion. And what I'm doing here is, is I'm making sure that the bolt side of it ends up on the passenger side of the wagon. So when I come down back down here getting out of the passenger side of the vehicle I don't have this bolt that could cut me my pant legs or anything I want the flat side of the bolt to come through so to put that in there I'll put some Loctite on that and then there's this short bolt that comes up through the bottom and one of the tricky things with that is is you got to come up with a way to get that nut down through that hole to get it onto the bolt now I don't know if you can see in there when I put that bolt up through it's not physically possible to get my fingers in there to start that. So there's a couple of things you can do. And what I'm going to do real quick is take the 17 millimeter socket. And I'm going to put a little neodymium magnet inside my socket. So I'll put it down in there. So we'll slide this up in underneath there. Get it into that. And then I'm going to take my nut and the magnet holds it in there. So now it's attached. I can reach down and I can get that thing started. Pretty simple way of getting that nut down in there when you can't reach it. 
And I recommend tightening, the, tightening this bottom one down first because what it'll do is it'll pull this hitch portion down tight to the bottom side before you tighten this up. Because if you tighten this up, there is enough play in there that it could let that hitch be at, a, at an odd angle. So we'll tighten the bottom one first and it'll pull that bottom piece flat. And I just put a little drop of Loctite on that as well. And again, I only want to tighten this down just prior to it starting to deform the sidewall because it is a lock nut and nylon on there. So that's about all you should need. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some grease in this one. This hitch pivots. So when it's doing that, all that articulation on the back tires, it allows this whole trailer to pivot. But that is a really nice feature. So I might go ahead and throw some grease in this. You probably won't see it coming out of there, but we'll get it greased in there. Rotate that around so I'm getting grease on all four sides or all sides of the shaft. And you can feel that actually tightening up a little bit when I get the grease pushed in there. And there we go. That ought to be enough. Well, we're ready for the final piece of the puzzle, and that's these two struts that come on here. And they are some of the strongest struts I've ever tried, because I cannot compress these whatsoever. So the way you have to do that, because the mount is back here, and the big end of the strut goes on the, uh, the tube part of the, the trailer hitch. So I'll put both those on there. I'll just let them sit. And then it comes with these pins. Something you want to think about with these pins is these holes here are in this direction. So I want to put this pin on in the same direction that 99% of the travel of the trailer would be going. So if I hit something, a stick or a twig, the only thing you can do is push it on further. If I put it in in this direction, and even worse, in the upward position... As I run over branches, it could catch that and pop that pin out. So you want to make sure that you put the pin in this direction with the flat side down so anything that brushes across it will not push it out. Now granted, you could back up and hit something and have it pop that pin out on you. But I think what I may do looking at that is I may put a wire keeper on these in case it ever does pop out or some kind of safety wire. You could even use a zip tie around the skinny end once you have that put on there to keep that from spreading and popping back out. So now we've got the back portions of the struts on on each side, making sure our pins are in the right direction. Got to go ahead and release this front hitch, lift that latch up, and go ahead and put these on. So we're there. Now we're going to want to go ahead and put the pins in here. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the same direction. So any stick that ever might get up under there would only push it that way and not pop it out. Well, I'll tell you what. Those are some surprisingly stiff struts and I think that's going to actually be very nice for helping assist for dumping this trailer. And I don't think you would accidentally want to let this thing go right now because it would hit me but uh, go ahead and bring it down and we're done. So now is where you got to be careful when we're going to flip this thing over that neither of us accidentally bump that latch because it will unspring this. Um, I'm curious looking at this I want to give everyone a safety precaution when you assemble this upside down and you put those struts on, and I wasn't joking earlier about how strong those are, I'm just going to bring this partially down, okay? Keep an eye on the hitch. If you got that all the way down and it slipped out of your hand, it will probably come up and break you in the jaw. So please keep that in mind that when you compress this down while the trailer's upside down, do not let go of this. And anytime you're getting ready to flip, flip this over to manipulate it, do not bump that latch because that will unwind that thing and it could be very surprising as to uh, how it comes apart on you. Knowing what I know and what I just showed you guys about the way this thing can come undone, 
I am actually a little leery that in manipulating this to flip it over, this could either get bumped or something could spread apart here and cause a major catastrophe. But even if you were to put a, a strap or something around this while you're flipping this unit over, I think it might be beneficial. Uh, especially if you have a, a child or your wife or somebody that doesn't know and grabs this to flip it and bumps that, that could be pretty bad. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw the clamp on underneath the latch portion and on top of the, uh, the tube itself. Clamp that down as a precaution for when we do flip this over. And that will walk that in and there's no way I can move this now and it doesn't release and shoot up on us. So I think we're safe now. One of the last things is these tires do not come inflated to uh, the proper inflation. This tire has got three and a half pounds of air pressure in it right now. So it is way low compared to what it needed. I think what I'm going to do is probably put that at 15 pounds instead of going to 20. So we're at 15 on this one right now. And not go to 20 because I think a little bit less air pressure will help any kind of bumps or bounces in that. I wonder if I should actually try stepping over it and bumping it on purpose. I wanted to give you guys one last strong word of caution if you were to get one of these. If you have kids or somebody that is messing around this trailer when it's either hooked up or not hooked up, you've got to be very careful. And I'm going to give you an example or show you why in the opposite direction now. So let's say I'm out here working around and I go to step over this trailer. I go to step over this thing and I accidentally kick that. So get ready. That lifted 200 pounds of me off the ground on this side of it. It comes up with a lot of force. There is a reason why it's like that. That is to help assist the load of gravel, dirt, trees, logs, whatever you have in there. But I would strongly suggest you don't allow kids to play around this with this on here. I think with that in mind, in a later video or something, I'm going to come up with a secondary latch mechanism that, that hooks around this lever that you have to move it away before you can release it just to prevent that trailer from ever doing what I just did there. This is going to be a great trail trailer for taking and maneuvering up through the woods and the trails. It's also going to make a fabulous yard trailer for putting topsoil, dirt, rocks, stones. Um, I've got a ton of wood chips that I want to move with this, so I'll be able to load this up with the excavator, take it to my wood yard area, and spread those chips around to kind of sop up some of the mud. So. All in all, this is a phenomenal looking trailer and I can't wait to get it outside to uh, do some real world testing with it. Right now it's starting to spit snow again, so I think we're just going to hold off on uh, doing anything with it outside. I do plan on doing a handful more future videos with it specifically on this trailer. And then I'm sure you'll see it throughout other videos as I use it through the yard to maintain things. So I'd like to thank Bob again at Metza Machine for sending this to me. Also sending Adam him one, and we're going to do some comparison videos between the two trailers and the differences they are. So like I said, Bob, thank you for thinking of me, and thank you for thinking of the channel and helping us out there. We're going to go ahead and do some more content on it. If you uh, have any interest in this trailer, like I said, check out MetzaMachine.com and see, go through their website. And you're going to look for the Ultratech trailer line and see the different trailers that they have. And they've got some other things that are pretty neat with these for hauling logs and stuff that uh, at some point I think I'm going to be interested in. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to check in soon on uh, the real use of these trailers and, and what I think of them and the comparison videos we come up with. So thanks again and see ya.